Hi there, Allison here with another Cab Franc du Jour. Today we are in Canada, and more specifically the 20 Mile Bench VQA sub-appellation in Ontario, and we're looking at the Domaine Caillou's 2018 La Grande Reserve Mason Vineyard Cabernet Franc. Now, the winery was established in 2010, and their winemaker Kelly Mason has been on board with them since 2013. And uh, she actually assumed the position of head winemaker in 2018. Now, if you're not familiar with Kelly and her wines, she needs to be on your radar. She's one of the great young winemaking talents we have here in Ontario. And she not only makes wine for Domaine Quilus, but also for Hansberger Estate, as well as the farm, uh, which is a tiny Chardonnay and Pinot Noir project as well. Now, today's wine is coming from Kelly's own vineyards, which she purchased in 2012. Uh, she has two acres of Cabernet Franc vines, and they were planted in the mid-1980s, so relatively old vines for Ontario. And she explained to me that she actually spent the first three years after purchasing the vineyard reworking this Cabernet Franc block in particular. The previous training system that was used here was known uh, is known as forearm niffin, uh, and this is not an ideal training system in, for Cabernet Franc. Uh, it's actually typically used for Concord grapes, but it's this training system that's really geared for quantity as opposed to quality. So she spent three years reworking the vines uh, into a double guillot training system, and this is a vertical shoot positioning or VSP training system. This is ideal from a qualitative standpoint. It's a two-arm, typically cane prune system, but it's what we generally see for Cabernet Franc, not only in the New World, but also in Europe as well. She is also very hands-on in the vineyard in terms of her pruning. Uh, she assesses each vine individually from a balanced perspective in terms of the canopy as well as the yield, and she will prune accordingly per vine uh, to achieve the optimal vine balance, which is great for phenolic ripeness as well as to help minimize uh, the pyrazines. Now the vineyard itself sits at around 135 meters above sea level. It slopes gently to the north, which is great from an air circulation standpoint. So we, we sort of uh, avoid a little frost risk in the springtime. And then the bedrock here is the Dolla Stone or Dolomite bedrock that we see predominantly throughout the Niagara Escarpment. Uh, Dolla Stone is like limestone. It's a little harder. There's this magnesium component in there as well. So it's a bit different elementally, but this is the bedrock we're dealing with. And then the topsoil is known as Chincuzi clay. And this is a specific soil soil series that is in Ontario and it's glacially derived soils is sort of probably clay based uh, with clay silty mix um, so good water retention here and then there's a little bit of like uh, glacial till uh, fragments as well in the soil now from a winemaking perspective uh, Kelly uh, this was all ha uh, hand harvested fruit hand sorted fruit de-stemmed uh, she works with indigenous yeast in this cellar for her fermentations. And uh, this saw a relatively long elevage in uh, French oak barrels uh, for 24 months. And uh, a small portion of that was, was new. On the nose, I'm getting a lovely kind of savory fruit profile. It kind of leans in that red currant, black currant. There's a little bit of wild blueberry here as well. Um, but it does have this lovely kind of savory earthiness. And then uh, pyrazines are nicely in balance with the fruit. I'm getting a touch of sort of dried herbs, a bit of currant leaf, maybe even a touch of like a capsicum note as well. But kind of savory. And then there's a lovely perfume. There's a nice lift to the nose as well. On the palate, all those same savory fruits come through like bang on uh, as they did on the nose. And then it has great vibrant acidity. The, the tannin structure super super fine very silky in the mouth and there's this wonderful kind of mid palate weight and texture which is really lovely and that might be from the elevage that longer time in oak um, which has sort of given us that nice kind of roundness uh, but it does have this lovely kind of middle palate sort of feel to it there's a lovely spiciness on the palate as well like a touch of clove and then there's this great sort of backbone of like a pencil shaving graphite kind of minerality, which I really like in Cab Franc. Now, the overall profile of this wine, it kind of sits, it's lean, it sits vertically on the palate, but it also has this sort of roundness of the mid palate, but it, generally speaking, it kind of sits more vertically. Uh, and it is serious. You can kind of sense that um, that someone who makes Pinot for a living or a lot of Pinot for a living made this wine because there is this sort of Burgundian finesse and elegance to it, which is really cool. Um, when I was tasting this earlier, the first thing that came to mind, and this is gonna sound really wacky, but um, I, it, I immediately thought of like a female teacher or, or headmaster as they call them in Europe, but like a female teacher who's quite tall, slender, 
Uh, she wears glasses, maybe her hair's in a bun or something like that, but um, <laughs> there, maybe it's the pencil shavings that made me think of this, but there's something about this wine that has this, it's meticulous, it, it has some authority to it, there's some seriousness, it's well-intentioned, but this is literally the image that kind of came to mind when I was tasting this earlier, and um, it's just what you're gonna get today, so deal with it, I guess. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, if you have this wine, I highly recommend decanting it. It does need some oxygen. It was really tight in the beginning. So give this wine some air. Uh, if you've had this wine before, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Or if you've had any of Kelly's Cab Francs, in fact, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with, the, with another wine.